Hi guys, Matt Easton here. So I've started doing more armour videos recently, as all of my uh, subscribers will surely have noticed. Um, and uh, something that often comes up in the comments is uh, referring to scale armour. Now, scale armour is a bit of a... it's a tricky one to deal with. Did scale armour exist historically? Yes, it did. Um, however, it was nowhere near as common across history as lots of you guys seem to think it was. Um, I know that uh, scale armour can be relatively easy to make and for that reason it has a quite a nice look to it. And for that reason it features quite a lot in, um, in sort of fantasy art but also in movies and TV. But actually historically scale armour has never really been particularly popular. Um, Yes, the Romans did have certain types of scale armour, however it's important to mention that at least the, the Roman scale armour that I've seen details of was actually scales attached to the surface of a male shirt. So the real armour there was actually the male shirt, and then it had brass scales attached over the top of it, so kind of a bit of added extra protection, but kind of almost decorative you could say. Um, the problem with scale armour is that the way that it, uh, you have lots of scales overlapping each other and hanging is fine so long as you know a strike or, or a point comes in from a sort of um, perpendicular or, or downwards angle. If anything comes upwards, you've got nothing to protect you. Okay? If you imagine the plates are overlapping like this, it's fine if it comes down and meets the scale. However, all you'd have to do if someone was wearing just basic scale armour is just thrust upwards. Just use your point half sword or thrust with it one handed upwards all the time and it will just meet almost no resistance because that's there isn't anything there with scale armour. So scale armour is kind of problematic as a protective thing. It doesn't work that great in my opinion. However it did exist and it's relatively easy to make. Pretty much any of you guys could go to a hardware store buy a sheet of, of brass or mild steel whatever you like uh, and some tin snips and cut out a load of squares, bash a couple of holes through each plate and stitch it onto a piece of clothing, bam, you've got the scale armour. Basically it's really easy to make and anyone can make it. There are some interesting historical scale armours that we do see around. I know for example in, um, in Tibet and I think parts of Nepal, essentially the Himalayas, um, there was types of scale armour used. Sometimes it was actually leather scales um, equally, uh, the uh, Native American uh, Indians did sometimes have something akin to scale armour, again made of hide and, or maybe horn plates, um, Eskimo some had certain types of armour as well, and, um, and it certainly appears in ancient artwork, often to show uh, a kind of foreign or exotic people, um, and I think that's it's similar to the, the use in modern fantasy. I think this idea of scale armour is something that somehow looks exotic or otherworldly and therefore has been popular in certain mediums across human history. Uh, but actually, historically, there's not, very, there's not a great weight of evidence of the use of scale armour. Other things have always been more popular. Lamellar armour, far more um, spread across a far bigger area of the world and used for a much longer period of time um, than scale armour really. Um, obviously mail, chain mail, used all over the world, um, a lot of parts of the world anyway, uh, and used for a very long period of time, very successful armour. Scale armour, not so much really. It did exist, not so common. Uh, one last example of scale armour I'll refer to, and it links into what I've already said, is you do occasionally see in 14th and 15th century European art, you do see elements of scale armour coupled with other things. So for example, in the late 14th century up to about 14, so between 1380s, 1390s, 1400, you occasionally see guys that have conventional plate harness um, but they actually have sometimes some scales showing almost like a shirt sleeve just at their shoulder either side and sometimes a skirt or what we'd call a fold instead of a overlapping plates for the fold you sometimes see them with scales on their fold um, and uh, this was apparently it seems to be from the artwork we don't have any surviving examples another alternative to having a plate defence on an area that has to have a lot of flex and movement 
um, over male. So you'd still have male underneath, but instead of trying to figure out a way to have complicated overlapping plates like they la later had, or they had at the same t period as that, um, you could have a simpler option that was scale armour over male armour. So you'd have the combination of plates over the male, much like the Roman shirts I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, but we don't know really whether this was a thing that was widespread, whether it was a thing that was done in certain areas. The, the artwork I'm referring to is actually German in this case. Uh, maybe it was something that was found in certain parts of Europe, or maybe it was just artistic license, and again, to make the person look exotic or uh, otherworldly or historical. And we should remember that in medieval art, often the scene that they're representing is showing either fantasy, uh, so it's an Arthurian, King Arthur and Lancelot type story, so they're talking about a time in a galaxy far, far away and a long time ago, um, so they're not actually showing people of their time necessarily, or sometimes they're recreating scenes from the Bible or other sort of mythological Greek or Roman um, stories, um, so they're deliberately showing things to be different to the norm. So there we go, some things to think about, but the headline for me for this video is Scale Armour was not as widespread or as successful as some guys uh, of you out there seem to think that it was. It, scale Armour was, it existed, but it was never really particularly popular and never very successful. Cheers.